الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي الحبت في الله امام مقبل بن هذه الوادعي الله يرحمه said in his treatise هذه دعوتنا وعقيدتنا we reach the second point from the uh, original treatise the full treatise be ibn Allah where Imam Muqbil said Rahmatul Ali Na'takadu Anna nida al-amwat wa istighatha bihim wa kada al-ahya fi ma la yaqdur alayhi illa Allah shirk billah the Imam said Rahmatul Ali he said and we believe that calling the dead and seeking or having hope in them and seeking help from them and likewise the living that are unable to fulfill our request is shirk billah is polytheism associating a partner with Allah and these ahabatifillah, these are things in which calling upon the living, meaning those people who are living now, who are unable to fulfill your request. So for example, you're in, and, and only Allah is able to fulfill that request. For example, if you say, you call, supplicate or you call your mother, you say, oh, my mother, no matter how beloved she is to you, may Allah preserve your mothers and my mother, I mean, and guide them all, I mean. If you say, oh, my beloved mother on the phone, please bless my wife to have a baby. That's something she's unable to fulfill. And only Allah can fulfill that want. So therefore it is shirk. Because now you are calling on someone, even though they're living, but they're completely, it's completely out of their power and their control. That's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you say to your doctor, you supplicate to your doctor, or you call your doctor, and you say, oh my doctor, please give me a healthy child. Not that you're asking them to do their best, but you say you're putting your hope and your trust that they will be able to meet this, this need and give you a healthy child, but that is not within their power. If your child, and may Allah protect us and protect you, is born with some ailment, the doctor cannot remove that ailment. That's not within his power. These are things only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do. So this is how you can fall into shirk, by calling upon someone who is unable. Or, for example, you're far away and you call, you say, oh, my friend so-and-so, or oh, my sheikh, Sheikh, please, and you're in your room. The door's closed. Your sheikh is 10 miles away or 1,000 miles away on the other side of the planet, whatever. Oh, my sheikh, please give me such and such. Please help me in this masala almiya. And this is, you know, there's no way to reach your sheikh. There's no way to that they are able to fulfill this request. Then this is very dangerous and perhaps can fall into that same uh, issue of calling upon the living in that which they are unable to do. So it shows us that it's a very dangerous thing, a very dangerous issue, and that is from the creed of Ahlul Sunnah to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. All worship belongs to Allah. And this is what we believe, and this is what the Imam, great uh, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi. Allah yarhamuhu, what he believed. The Shaykh said in another uh, one of his treatises, and he brought the evidence, he says, Alladhi yad'u al-amwat li rija jal nafa' o dafa' dar yubayin lahu anna hadha shirk wa kufr kama qala ta'ala وَمَنْ يَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَٰهٍ آخر لا برهان له به فإنما حسابه عند ربه إنه لا يفلح الكافرون 
وقال تعالى والذين تدعون من دونه ما يملكون من قتمير إن تدعوهم لا يسمعوا دعاءكم ولو سمعوا ما استجابوا لكم ما استجابوا لكم ويوم القيامة يكفرون بشرككم ولا ينبيكم مثل خبير The Sheikh said رحمة الله عليه He said those who call the dead and seek and have hope <coughs> that they can remove that they can benefit them or they can remove a harm then these people you should clarify for them so this is a qama alayhi al hujjah this is very important this is an issue related to takfir so we have to pay attention to this he said yubayn lahu that this this is shirk and kufr so that you should notify you should uh, make balugh to this person who's doing shirk you see someone he's supplicating to the dead he's supplicating to his sheikh he's looking at his cell phone saying oh my sheikh please even his sheikh might be alive in Mauritania or wherever but he's looking and crying and saying oh my sheikh please help me please help my wife uh, she's barren. Please help her to have a child. Yubayin lahu. Clarify for him. This ahi, this is shirk. This is kufr. This is what the sheikh said. That you should clarify for him. And then he mentioned as evidence, he said, Kama qala ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty said in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَدْعُ مَا اللَّهِ لَهِنْ آخر. Whoever supplicates or calls upon uh, with Allah another god, without proof for doing so, then verily his reckoning is uh, with his Lord. And verily Allah does not give success to the kafirin, to the disbelievers. Showing us that supplicating to other than Allah, another God, meaning anyone or anything else worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is shirk and it's kufr. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the second part of that ayat, he says, إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِهُ kafirun." Verily, he does not give success to the disbelievers. Letting us know what? What's the, the relationship there? First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that people are committing shirk without burhan, without any proof for doing so. That they're attributing, associating gods or worshipping gods and supplicating to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along with Allah. That's shirk as well. Even if you worship the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that's shirk. If you supplicate to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this is shirk. If you supplicate to the angels, this is shirk. If you supplicate to me, it's shirk. If you supplicate to the dead, it's shirk. If you supplicate to the trees, to the rocks, to the elephants, to the cow, you hold the cow sacred. This is shirk. All of it's the same. And Allah says about the one who takes a God with him or besides him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Verily, he does not uh, help the disbelievers. And in the second ayat, the Shaykh mentioned, and Allah the Almighty said, <clears throat> Those uh, whom you invoke or call upon instead of him, Oh, not even a kitmir. Kitmir means like a thin membrane over the date stone. So if you have eaten dates and you sometimes, there's sometimes like a very thin membrane which encases uh, inside the date over the, uh, over the date stone, over the seed of the date. There'll be a very thin, thin, thin membrane. So those people who you supplicate, those whom you invoke or call upon instead of him, meaning instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, own not even a katmir. They don't even own this membrane that's over the date uh, seed. If you invoke or call upon them, they hear not your call. And if in case they were to hear, they could not grant it, meaning your request to you. And on the day of resurrection, they will disown your worshiping them and none can inform you like him who is the all-knower of everything, meaning Allah Azza wa Jal. There's so many benefits in that ayat there. 
and it's a refutation of all of those people who uh, commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are considered in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as those who consider themselves from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, like, and otherwise because they supplicate how many times and I remember this debate we'd always have with people from the 5% nation we have them in America they're a group of predominantly African American and maybe Hispanic youth who believe they're, they're a split from the nation of Islam and they say that they call themselves, they refer to themselves as gods. And you'll find that many rappers have embraced this uh, false, devilish ideology. They've been tricked by the shaitan. So they'll say to you, what's up God? Like this. And they give themselves names like Allah and honorable. Matter of fact, one of the rap groups that was famous that was uh, is the brand Nubians. They were they are, I don't know if they are now, but they were uh, this type of mushrik. They were uh, the 5% nation. And I used to ask these individuals, I used to say, so you say you're a god and you keep referring to me as god because I'm a black man, a'udhu billah, and I'm far removed from what you associate with me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. But you make this claim, but you can't even... Defend yourself from sickness when you become sick. Right now I'm getting over a sickness. I can't even, all I can do is take medicines or I, I'm into natural cure, so I'm drinking all kind of herbal teas and taking all kind of herbs and all kind of things like this. But the shifa is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only way any of these things are going to work is if Allah blesses them to be a cure for me. And Habatifillah, this is very important for us to understand that all of those false groups that, as Allah mentioned, they can't even help themselves. If they were to hear, meaning those dead that you supplicate, even if they were to hear your dead sheikh, if Abdul Qadr Jailani, if the Tijani uh, uh, sheikh or, or, or leader of that movement were to hear you, or whoever else that you worship, Sayyid so-and-so, Sayyid Bedoui, Sayyid so-and-so. All these individuals, if they were to hear you, if they were to hear you, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they wouldn't be able to help you. So not only are they unable to hear, and anything that's unable to hear, how could it be worthy of worship? Anything that's unable to fulfill your request, how could it be worthy of worship? So be very careful, ya Ahabitifillah, from shirk billah, and make it clear for your brothers and sisters in Islam. Then the Shaykh, he also mentioned, he said, and the reason for this, he said, because dua is ibadah, worship is ibadah. Lana dua ibadah. La yuju sarafaha li ghayri Allah ta'ala, kama qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a dua hu ibadah. ثم قرأ وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستخبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين. The Sheikh mentioned, رحمة الله عليه. He said, "Dua, it is ibadah, it is worship." And he said that it is not permissible. Therefore, it's not permissible to 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 worship or give that ibadah to anyone. Other than Allah the Almighty, and may Allah forgive us for our much, our taqseer and ibadah. May Allah accept the ibadah that we do. Amen. And then he said, Kama qala Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as was the madhab of Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, he was very, uh, you, if you listen to his tapes, I haven't heard anyone like him as far as evidence and this is one thing I like about Yemen and the Mashaykh in Yemen is that because they are very strong in hints when they speak a lot of times they give you very little from themselves and they just give you nasus a barrage of nasus to give you to make the point so the Sheikh was always qala Allah qala Rasul qala Allah qala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam powerful powerful uh, 
a sloob in de delivering the da'wah, the da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. So the Shaykh here, he gave, as usual, uh, he gave an ayat and a hadith. He said, a dua hu ibadah. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu in Sahih Tirmidhi, a dua hu ibadah. Supplication is worship. The Prophet Sallallahu said it. Don't say that this is the Wahhabi creed. Don't say that someone else made this creed up. This is what your Nabi, Muhammad, Ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a dua hu ibadah. Dua, supplication is ibadah. It is worship. So you cannot supplicate to anyone. Don't say there's another type of supplication. Da, 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 da. You know, all these excuses to supplicate to other than Allah. Especially on any kind of wajj of ibadah. How is it you can call the dead and call that Islam? Us who embrace Islam, we can't even fathom that. Because we left kufr. We left worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Jesus alayhi salatu salam or, or whoever. And we came to Islam because of the Tawheed, because of the, the, clean, the cleanliness of Tawheed and monotheism, that you can have that direct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so with this, how is it that people, and how can people that have left kufr come to Islam to another type of kufr? Those people who embrace the Sufi tariqah and tabi, be careful, ahabatifillah, be careful of kabani and other extremists, they're extremists. It's not just ISIS and those, those are one extreme, but you have another extreme of shirk and kufr, at least ISIS and those other in Boko Haram, those <coughs> people, <coughs> inshallah, are Muslim. They're Muslims that are just extreme. They go beyond the Sharia and they commit wicked acts of killing and slaughtering. And we don't agree with that and we don't believe in their takfir and all their other evil mukhalifat. But they're still Muslim and they can still die and go to paradise. But how lie those people who worship their sheikhs, worship the dead, and they die upon that on Kufr al-Akbar and Shirk al-Akbar, they've got no action. they got no chance. Ahabatifillah, then the Shaykh mentioned another ayat. Then he said, Thumma qara. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ, this is the full hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, A dua huwa ibadah. Then he read the ayat. He said, Waqala rabbukum ad'uni astajib lakum inna ladhina yasakbirun an ibadah sayyirkhuluna jahannam adakhirin. Then the Prophet ﷺ read the ayat in Surah Al-Ghafr, uh, ayat 60. Uh, and your Lord said, uh, Supplicate to me, and I will give you. Verily, those who are arrogant in worshiping me, then they uh, they will not they they will enter Jahannam. They will enter the hellfire in humiliation. Allahu Akbar. Look at that. Al Jaza Jins Al Amal. This is the first time I ever looked at that ayat and saw that, and it just came to me this qaida that the ulama say Al Jaza Jins Al Amal. Meaning that the reward that you receive uh, for something is a part of the deed that you did. So, for example, in this ayat, they, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينِ يَسْتَقْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord said, Supplicate to me, and I will give you. Verily, those who are arrogant... So Allah says, those who are arrogant, he's addressing those. Think about how many people who don't worship Allah due to arrogance. They say, I can't be Muslim because, you know, the Muslims are poor. I see mainly Muslims in third world countries, although that's not even true. You have Muslims everywhere. But, you know, maybe this is the image. Probably majority of the Muslims are poor, just like majority of the human beings are poor. Okay, and majority, and you see a lot of ignorant practices in many, in every third world country, in every country, but especially, unfortunately, in, uh, you know, there's a lot of jahiliya practices and ignorant practices which go against Islam. The point being, Ahabatifillah, that إِنَّ الَّذِي يَسْتَخْبِرُونَ عَنِ عِبَادَتِي So, for whatever reason that this person refuses to embrace Islam or refuses to supplicate to Allah alone, maybe they say, no, my madhab says this. I, I'm comfortable where I'm at. My sheikh says, Supplicate to the dead, and I supplicate to the dead. <coughs> so I supplicate to the dead. 
Don't bother me. I don't want to change. I don't want to hear it. I don't care about all those evidence you mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet My Shaykh said this. So then it's arrogance that prevents them from coming to the worship of the law. So what is the jaza agents of amal here? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladini istakhbirun an ibadini sayyidkhuluna jahannam dakhirin. So very those who are ignorant, uh, arrogant, they will enter jahannam in what state? In their arrogant state? No, they will enter in humility. <coughs> they will enter jahannam in humility and be there forever. Wa'iyad billah. And we'll end it there and we'll continue on because I want to bring some fuwaid from Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, about the same mas'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.